newspaper. I guess there's an organization to a newspaper as well, but Freekeen is a, is a blog where uh, I'm the creator of the blog and then I invite people to blog at that website, including Garrett and maybe about a dozen other folks from across the state. But it's commonly misconstrued and used as a pejorative term here uh, in Keene by certain people. Now, putting aside for a minute, Free Keen. Is there any other organization that has any type of affiliation, connection, involvement with Robin Hood activity? Not to my knowledge, and not everyone who's Robin Hooded has been a blogger at Free Keen. And, and is it, is, uh, Garrett testified that, that Free Keen doesn't have any, doesn't have officers. Correct. There's no president, vice president, treasurer. That's correct. There are no meetings, no officers, nothing like that. I run the website. I'm the administrator of the site. But as Garrett testified, there's no editorial approval. Everyone has just free reign to post whatever they feel is appropriate. To your knowledge, is there any sort of central entity of any form or shape that sort of organizes, directs, and coordinates Robin Hood activity? I think for a period of time, are we talking about within the last two years? Yes. Uh, within the last two years, no. And um, do you, I mean, are, when you, have you engaged in Robin Hood activity in the last two years? Yes. Okay. And is that based upon um, direction or requests from other people, or is it a spontaneous decision you've made on your own? It's always been spontaneous on my part. Um, I just whenever I'm out and about in downtown Keene for whatever reason, uh, in the case of the video, it was I was helping James Cleveland do his campaign and giving people rides to the polls is where I what I was doing down there. But um, just whatever I'm happy to be downtown, if I spot one of the parking enforcers, I usually have my backpack with me and I always have a baggie full of uh, change and uh, the Robin Hood calling cards. So I'm more of an opportunist, I guess, in that way. Have you ever directed, required, or sort of otherwise um, gotten someone else to engage in Robin Hooding activity? Uh, never. The only thing that would come close to that would be inviting people during Keenvention to go out and kind of experience Robin Hooding, and that was testified to earlier. That's like a one day a year? Activity. It's a weekend, uh, so we're, uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and of course they don't enforce on Sunday, so Friday and Saturday visitors are invited to go out with James or, or Garrett and just to kind of experience it, and that's just because it's a, it's a fun thing for people to do. It's been in the news and people are curious about it, so they want to know what it's like and it gives them that chance to experience it, because it's fun to help people. Now, in the last two years, since October 2013, Approximately how many times have you engaged in Robin Hood activity? You know, I can only think of twice, but it might be three to four, perhaps, if maximum. So, to the best of your recollection, less than less than six. Oh, absolutely. And is it correct that one of those instances was captured on this this video that's been shown in the court? That's correct. And, and who took the video? I did. Now. And, and I take it this occurred in the proximity of, of the campus of Keene State? Yeah, we're right out front of Keene State on Main Street in Keene. And, and you were there for the purpose of helping people? There's a ballot box there or nearby? Uh, so the idea was to give the college students rides to the Ward 1 voting location. So I was positioned on the street with my uh, car awaiting college students who wanted to get a ride. Um, and, and there was testimony there was somebody else present with you? Uh, yes, there was uh, Matthew Roach who was and present. Why was he present? I think he was also there helping with the uh, the campaign in some way, but he was a little ways away. You say helping with the campaign, you mean the electoral campaign? Correct. Yeah, James Cleveland was in the in the race at that time. Now, um, the view in the video is of this primarily of people walking up and down a sidewalk. What what is the just the you can just describe the, the location and particularly where the parking meters are located in that area. So in the freeze frame that we're at right now, the parking meters are behind me maybe 15 feet. It's a fairly wide grassy area between the sidewalk and the parking meters. So there's a road, parking meters at the edge of the curb. That's right. Then a fairly wide grassy stretch and then the sidewalk. Correct. Right? And then you get to then you get on campus past that fence there. Now during the time that you were filming this video, which I think has been identified as being approximately four minutes, um, what, how far 
or close were you approximately uh, to the parking enforcement officer? I probably never got much closer than I would say six feet away. If you look during the video, you'll see the, the sidewalk is also maybe as wide as uh, Lynn is tall there. And she's toward the fence side of it and I am on the grassy area. So it's wide enough of a berth to actually give people the ability to walk between her and I. Uh, so there's, I never really felt like I was getting anywhere near her personal space, nor would I want to. Now you saw the video, a certain point, she puts her hand up like this, correct? Yes. Okay. And during that time, a verbal exchange is occurring between you and her, correct? Yeah, I believe at that moment she says, I've had enough. Okay. And as she puts up her hand, um, are you anywhere in her per near her personal space? Absolutely not. If you were to play that portion of the video, you would see that there's more than enough room for someone to walk by between the two of us at that time. So in your, from your observation, when she puts up her hand like that, what is she doing? She's uh, verbally expressing that she wants me to stop, and so she's also giving that indicator. She, she doesn't want me to be there doing what I was doing. And once the video in that case stopped, um, did you continue to engage in Robin Hood activity? No, I uh, continue to await students for rides to the polls. Now, if the judge were to order that you and the other named defendants were to stay, were always at all times to be more than 10 feet away from the parking enforcement officers, how would that affect um, your ability or the effectiveness of your ability to engage in Robin Hooding? It would basically kill the ability to Robin Hood um, because as I think Garrett testified to earlier, I want to stay in front of. There's been a lot of talk about following people. I'm not interested in following anyone because then I can't rescue anyone from getting a ticket. So I want to be ahead of them and as a single person, I don't usually have anyone out with me to assist. So as a single person Robin Hooding, my goal is to feed the meter prior to them reaching the meter and then uh, also leave the calling card on the front window. So while they're walking towards my direction, I'm feeding the meter and going to the windshield to leave a calling card. And I still have to be in front of them by the time I'm done with all of that if I want to keep saving people from getting tickets. So it's in my interest to stay ahead of them, but they'll play little games where they'll get up to one of the corners. And if I've walked too far ahead, they'll turn the other direction down that street. So then I have to go and, and close the gap and once again, get a, get ahead of them. Um, or I'll be standing at a street corner waiting for traffic to clear so I can keep going and they'll again close the gap. So anytime that they close the gap, I would then be in violation of some sort of you know theoretical order, which uh, would be a problem. And it was, certainly would be a problem further if I was just eating downtown at a restaurant. Are there times in which you are plugging the meter and the parking enforcement officers within 10 feet of you when you're doing that? I would prefer that not happen, but there have been some cases where Jane has uh, maybe doubled, doubled her speed uh, to try to get ahead of me when I'm ahead of her. Sounds like a race to the parking meter. I don't know if she considers it that, but uh, perhaps. Now, let's put aside the Robin Hooding activity for a minute. You live in Keene, correct? I do. Do you frequent downtown Keene? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, if the court put in an order that you could not be within 10 feet of the parking enforcement officer at any time while that parking enforcement officer was on duty, how would that affect your day-to-day -day life as a citizen of Keene? I would be uh, super paranoid downtown because I would always have to wonder if I was going to come within that, uh, that radius and, you know, could I even sit out and enjoy a nice uh, summer day uh, at a restaurant without having to be worried about jumping out of my chair and running into the street to avoid some sort of contempt of court charge. Now, now this day may not be a great example, but I take it that there are days when the downtown sidewalks of Keene have like outdoor tables overflowing from the local restaurants and stuff like that? Certainly. And is it fairly common for the parking enforcement officers as part of their normal routes to come within 10 feet of those areas? It would be unavoidable for them to do that. Yeah, they would have to. In your opinion, if you were required to stay 
at least 10 feet away from the parking enforcement officers or potentially further. Um, would that potentially create any public safety issues? Well, certainly, certainly. I mean, if um, you know, if I was, if I were Robin Hooding, thirty feet ahead of them, and then they started to close the gap, and I'm waiting at a, at a crosswalk, then I either jump out in traffic or I get a contempt of court uh, charge. So that could be a, a real danger. Thank you. I've got no further questions. Cross examination. So, Mr. Uh, Freeman, um, time frame is the last two years. So, Mr. Freeman, um, your point is to shut down the parking enforcement department, isn't it? I would say that it's a very general statement, and uh, while I wouldn't be sad to see the parking enforcement department shut down, I think that optimally, uh, I don't have an objection with people having rules for parking on their private property. So what I'd like to see is the uh, business owners downtown having control over the spaces that are adjacent to their property and let the market decide how to handle enforcement. Uh, but ultimately, we don't need the state to, to handle that. And don't you think it's absolutely true that the fewer parking enforcement officers that are on the street, that means fewer tickets issued, correct? That sounds accurate. And you would uh, absolutely be in favor that the that Jane and uh, Lynn and anybody else that might be hired uh, quit their jobs, correct? I would hope that they would find some productive employment where they're actually providing a, de a market desirable service to people. And you would absolutely want them to quit their jobs, wouldn't you? Um, that wouldn't be an objectionable thing. I know, I don't think so. In fact, you've already said that that's one of your goals, isn't it? Well, like I said, I would like to see the entire department shut down, and that would include all of the parking uh, employees. You've already said that that is one of your goals, that they quit their jobs, correct? Sure. And. The parking enforcement department has not shut down, has it? No, they haven't. Um, and didn't shut down uh, two years ago? No, but they are writing fewer tickets. It didn't shut down within the last two years? That's correct. And presumably it's not going to shut down tomorrow, is it? I presume you're right about that. Presumably those two people that you've been following. Excuse me, I haven't been following people. I'm sorry, Lynn and Jane are people. I think I pointed out before that it's my goal to walk in front of uh, the parking enforcers, which would mean they're following me so in that case. My point is that Jane and Linda are going to continue to issue tickets today and tomorrow and the next day, aren't they? Well, I would hope that they have a uh, pang of conscience and decide to not do that anymore. And you want to be part of that shutdown preventing them from issuing tickets, don't you? What I want to do is save people from getting tickets, in which order, makes people's lives better. And in order to do that, you're willing to attempt to try to get Jane and Lynn, two people, to stop issuing tickets, correct? Well, when I'm... No, wait, wait. You know, Objection. No, no. He... Uh, he Councilman approach. Councilman yeah. approach. Yep.
Could you re-ask your question? <clears throat> your goal is to shut down the parking enforcement department, correct? That's how you're interpreting the goal. Um, I wouldn't mind seeing that happen, but my primary goal, sir, is to save people from getting parking tickets. If they decide to shut down the department, I consider that a bonus. I'm going to move to strike the answer and ask, them to, ask you to admonish the witness to answer the question. The question what? was, the goal is to uh, shut down the parking department entirely. He's asking me what my goal is, and I explained what no, my goal I is. Respond. Yes. I understand this is cross-examination, but when I call test, when I questioned the parking enforcement officers this morning, their questions, their responses, at least in my opinion, went considerably beyond the scope of my question, and and the court permitted that, and I think Mr. Freeman is entitled to the same latitude. Well. I, I understand the the general concern about 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 the question, but uh, but and if it's and if it goes beyond what the question calls for, and there's a proper motion to strike, I'll strike it. But I think right now, I think he's trying to explain what his goals are. And I think that's a fair response. So the motion to strike is denied, and you may complete your response, Mr. Freeman. Thank you. Yeah, I don't appreciate you trying to tell me what my goals are, sir. Okay, well that's stricken. That that's that go, now 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 you're editor, editorializing. You can answer the question, but but you can't use this as an opportunity to just launch on on counsel. Confine your response to the question that was posed. Okay. Well, then I'll leave it as as it was prior to his motion. Let's take a look at your testimony, page 475, line one. Quote: What did you testify? Uh, read, that says, read verbatim, my point is, I would like to see the parking enforcement department shut down entirely. However, I don't end, know what came before that. End quote. Now, is your goal the same today? That is a bonus. That is not the primary goal of Robin Hooding. Is your point the same today as it was back when you testified under oath? Would I like to see the parking enforcement shut down? Yes, I would like to see that happen. And you want to see that happen tomorrow, correct? I'm not unrealistic. Obviously, that's not going to happen tomorrow. But your point you know, your goal is the same, that you want to see it shut down entirely tomorrow and next week. Any time would be fine. Right. Right. How about the next no, hour? I would, I, I would ask the attorney Bauer maintain some distance from the witness during the course of the question. Fifteen feet? <laughs> <laughs> thought, I'm not intimidated. I thought, if I thought we might. I thought we might hear something along that that line. How about, how about five feet? <laughs> I'm not intimidated by your presence. It's fine. You can get as close as you as you like. Okay. And the next question that I wanted to show you on page 475. Please feel free to, to come back up. I really. It's, it's yeah, I would ask that, that when I when the witness is asked questions, that he be given the chance not only read the question and answer, but also see the context of the uh, testimony. I think that that's fair. If you're going to ask him about a specific page, you should be able to see the page. Page 475. The question was, read it out loud, please. This is your question. What I asked you, though, was, if there are fewer parking enforcement officers on the street, that means fewer tickets issued correct. And your answer was, quote? Absolutely true. End quote. Correct? Uh, yeah, I believe you already asked me that question here today. Same point uh, back two years ago as it is today? Yep, I would say that's accurate. Fewer tickets, right? Sure. And part of your answer before on page Jackson, 470. Your Honor, I understand the use of, of the transcript to impeach the witness and raise the question of the witness's credibility. But I, I do not believe it is permissible to ask the witness about his testimony two years ago um, when that testimony was just given today. And that's not, there's no credibility issues there. Just repeat what you already said. And the hearing where we're supposed to be talking about recent events. Well, I think the point. I think the point was, and, and I'm going to allow his cross examination that really to relating it to the recent activities and, and that 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 uh, that that the goals and and what's trying to be accomplished is is hasn't changed in, in a couple of years. So as that that's I'm, I've allowed both sides to do that to explain and put put into context the recent activities. So the objections overruled. So you want them to quit their jobs, don't you? 
That would be fine with me if they quit their jobs. I would love to see them take a productive role in the economy. And you'd like to take a little bit of credit for them quitting their jobs, wouldn't you? 